A very good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, from whatever place it is that you're tuned on to the Life uh, Signatures uh, Radio. It's a daily podcast on the subjects of purpose, productivity, and resilience. If this is the first time that you're joining or you're tuning into this show, it's a teaching podcast. If you're looking for inspiration, motivation, if you're looking for uh, someone to make you to think and give you some kind of direction, this is it. This is the virtual incubator for purpose, productivity, and resilience. If you want to stay around, you can stay around and please share with as many people as you can. We are in the middle of a series where we're talking about the fullness of the glory of an individual, you and I. What do we need to do? What are the pillars of the fullness of our glory? We've laid quite a bit of background in the past five or so episodes, and I want us to go deeper right now. I want us to talk about the six pillars. We're going to be talking about one by one, the six pillars of the fullness of our glory as individuals. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. I think... You and I will be healthy if we come to the place where we know that we have not reached where we're supposed to reach. There's only one guy, and I was talking about him, I didn't even finish talking about him in the previous episodes, who said, I have run my race. I have finished. And now I'm just waiting for glory. I'm waiting to be crowned with glory. I have run my race. As in everything that I was supposed to do, I've done. This is the Apostle Paul. Okay, there's also another person in the Bible before Apostle Paul who said, it is finished. In other words, I've done it. Now, let me ask you this uncanny, morbid question. Are you ready to die? As in, if you died today, will you be dying at the peak of your glory? Now, listen to me carefully peak of your glory is not the peak of your age. It has absolutely nothing to do with age. The person who said it is finished died at the age of 33. We're still talking about him today. Empires have been built, fought. I mean, things have been done to humanity, good things and so on. In his name, died at 33, fullness of his glory continuing to inspire people even up to today, including myself. It is not an age thing. The fullness, when I come to the fullness of my glory, is not about how old I am. Of course, age, you know, I've got to be a child and I've got to grow up as a child. I've got to leave childish ways behind and so on and so forth. But the fullness of my glory doesn't come necessarily when I'm 89 teetering at the edge of the cliff of life. I don't know where I will be at 89, by the way. But I don't want to wait until I'm 89 so that the fullness of my glory can come to the fore. And that's why we're discussing these things. What are these things that contribute to the fullness of my glory? The very first thing that I want to discuss, and I'm going to talk about that shortly, but you, you get the, the, the picture. It's not necessarily about performance. Rather, it is about being. It is about being. It's about, it's about, 
can I say, manifesting whatever it is of the Creator. The Bible says that the world is groaning, awaiting the manifestation of the sons of God. It's about being. It's about being. The being, the doing follows, the performance follows the being. The fullness of my glory is seldom about the things that I have done as it is about the fullness of who I really am. And I know I'm going ahead of myself, but let me say this. It is possible. It is possible that you can do great things, but at the end of the day, they won't count for the fullness of your glory. It is possible. You know, it is possible. You will know this. You will feel this. Even the devil will know this. And even God will know this. That this, what I have just done, ah, it ain't anything about my glory. And sadly, my friends, sadly, we find many of us in humanity going that particular path while we're doing incredible stuff. R. Covey said sometimes you can climb a ladder that is leaning on a wall and then when you reach at the top, you realize that, oh, wait a minute, wrong wall. That's the same thing I'm saying here. We can do incredible stuff but doesn't count for the fullness of our glory. That's why we've got to understand the pillars of this glory. We are the splendor of creation. We are the icing on the cake of creation. It therefore follows that we ought to give priority to where priority is due. The, the, see, the, the, the fullness of my glory is something that is predetermined. It's known. In other words, it's intended. It's designed. It's not something I'm going to stumble upon. It's intended. There is a license for me to live to the fullness of my glory. There is a go-ahead. There is a permission for me. There is an intention for me to live to the fullness of my glory. And that intention, that license, that permission, the capacitating, that potential, it is given by the one who created me. It is something that is in the delight. It is in the reason, the purpose for my creation. So any person that spends time and effort to bring something into existence derives a lot of pleasure, a lot of satisfaction when the ultimate performance of the creation is done. When you see the thing that you've created, the code that you've written, when you see it's running so well, you smile from ear to ear. It gives you, it's, it's glorious because it's done what it is glorious, what it's intended to do in the first place. So here's the thing though. You and I are the icings on the cake of creation. Ought we to be more glorious in our essence, in our pursuits, and in the impact that we are living on the face of the earth? And I think our greatest pursuit in life ought to be to see the fullness of our glory come to the fore. And there are several pillars that I'm going to talk about in the first pillar today is about uniqueness. In order to understand the fullness of our glory, I perceive it is important for us to further go to the dregs of details in dissecting it. And what a better way to do this than to discuss what I consider to be the major pillars. And the major pillar, number one, is uniqueness. I talked about this, alluded to this when I was beginning to talk about these things. The fullness of my glory varies from one person to another. That's why I said yesterday, I cannot inherit glory. I mean, how many times have you seen even kingdoms? One king rises and it's worse than the past king. Why? You cannot inherit glory. It's, glory is not an inheritance. It's not, a, it's not even in the DNA. Let me say that. Okay. I know it's controversial. It's not going to be handed down to you. Just because you are born doesn't mean you're glorious. But just because you're born, it means you are intended. Potentially, you can become glorious. That's what it means. In other words, your, in fact, by the way, your glory is not the same as your dad's glory or your mom's glory. Neither is it the, the intended to be the same. 
your glory cannot be the same as that one of your brother or your sister. They are different. We are all unique. Where does this come from? It comes from the essence of, of there being a one original creator, one God. See, that will feed into the idea that the one creator has one purpose for his creation. That singular purpose cannot be fulfilled by each of us without going into it in our uniqueness. The singular purpose is fulfilled when each individual, each and every one of us, deploys their full glory, the fullness of their glory. The signature of the creator is no doubt characterized by the splendor and the magnificence of the creator. This is so because the creator in his wisdom decided to work with variety, which is another mark of his magnificence. I don't think anyone is magnificent when they are the same. I mean, everything. if the creator made everything the same, there's no magnificence in there. That's why one of the most expensive vehicles in the world is the Rolls Royce because it is custom made. It is not mass produced. In other words, the fullness of glory is provided for in each part of the merits of the varieties in creation. They are needed. Each part is needed for the fullness of the glory of the one. Right? The whole creation. It needs a variety in its fullness. For us humans, each individual contributes to the fullness of whatever the creator intended for them to deploy. To the fullness of their own capacity, their own glory. Anything short of that affects in some way the whole story. It affects the whole picture. That's why it is important for us to celebrate our own individuality and our own uniqueness. It is important. Interestingly, every time we copy someone, it is because they have appeared in glory. That's why we are copying them. You don't copy cheap. You don't copy drab. You copy glory. You ape glory. At least in your eyes. People do not go around aping anything that is drab. They, they make fun of it and they laugh at it. And When something appears in the fullness of its glory, people want to identify with it. They want to take selfies with it. They want to take photos with it. They want it to sign their photographs. What we fail to see in the process is that each person, each person has that unique ability and that capacity to shine their own fullness of their own glory. That's what we fail to see. The fullness of our glory varies from one person to the next. It's never going to be the same. In fact, it has never been intended to be the same to begin with. Everyone is unique. Everyone is important. There is no human being in existence from the get-go who came here on earth and the Creator never intended them to, to, to shine and to have glory on them. None. I have talked about this in the previous episodes. I mean, look from the purely human perspective. What innovator, what inventor, what artist, what human creator or anything came up with something that they would be, you know, useless or had no zero attention or no zero value. All humans who made things want those things to shine from their own glory. The same applies to you and your creator. You are created to shine. I am created to shine to the fullness of our glories on the face of the earth. And I believe that with all of my heart, that is the core reason as to why we exist. We exist to shine the fullness of our glory. And I do not believe that our existence on earth is pitiful, faithful, or faithful or uh, on the whim of the one who is keen to punish us. The evidence is even in our own biological makeup. Just look at how magnificent you are biologically. Look at the wand of your nervous system. Look at the wand of the blood circulatory. Look at how the the the, the heart pumps blood. Look at look at Look at how chemicals are sent through your body to, you know, determine emotions and all that. We cannot be composed of that splendor just for fun. The very fact that we are intricately and masterfully glorious is a hint that the lives that we are supposed to live 
ought to be to the fullness of the glory of our brilliance. So, like I said earlier, the icing on the cake is that each of us is unique. That is a great pillar of glory, uniqueness. We are here to serve the general purpose of the creator, but we are serving our unique glory, our unique dispensation, our unique different. So what is my difference? That is the first pillar of my glory. But if I go trying to be somebody else, I am not going to shine. My glory starts fading the very moment I am not living to the exact uniqueness and differentness that I am supposed to be. Tomorrow, we go on and talk about another pillar of your fullness of your glory. Until then, bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.